And May 3rd is Press Freedom Day. To talk a bit more about press freedom in the Americas, we have two journalists with us. First, we have from Honduras, uh, Geraldo Torres. And also from Caracas, we have Mr. Ian Bruce. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here with us. Now, let me start with you, um, Geraldo. We've seen a lot of violence toward journalists in Latin America, especially. Uh, in Honduras alone, where you're from, 60 have been killed in the past 13 years. Now, you've been threatened. Um, can you give us that story briefly? Well, yes, uh, three weeks ago in Tegucigalpa, after I left my house, uh, two men in a motorcycle followed me and uh, demanded me to stop, uh, so I did. They weren't police officers. They, uh, they asked me for my personal documents. I refused. They took me out of the car. And uh, it was a violent situation in, in, that, in that moment. Uh, it, it didn't happen more because I stopped in a, in a gas station where the workers there uh, came around and asked if I, I, they were trying to rob me. I, I, I told them that I didn't know what they were trying to do. Uh, when they saw that they were discovered and there were cameras, they just left me there and, and went away. Uh, but this is something that happens uh, commonly with other journalists that uh, work uh, in, in a critical way of what the government's doing. Mm. And there are threats and there are persecutions. Uh, there are also accusations. Many journalists in Honduras uh, are facing jail and are in several trials. And as you said, uh, 60 have been uh, murdered in the last 13 years, especially uh, more than 54, well, 54 since the 2009 coup d'etat. Six uh, before the coup and then 54 after 2009. So you're saying there's absolutely no recourse for journalists in Honduras? No, there is no, uh, there is no possibility for safety for, for journalists in Honduras. Last year, the Congress approved a protection law for journalists, but there has been uh, no real consequence of that. Uh, instead, we have seen that the general attorney and the uh, authorities that are responsible for the investigation, we have an impunity rate of 96%. That means that uh, from all these journalists, only uh, five have been investigated and only four people are in jail at this moment. And none of them are of the masterminds behind those crimes. Uh, they have uh, a ca a captured and are in jail the people that killed the journalists but there is no investigation on who sent them to kill or what were the causes that motivated the assassination of so many journalists in Honduras. What kind of response do you get from private media outlets that support the government in Honduras? Um, do they at all condemn the government? No, uh, corporate media responds to corporate interests that are, are, that are allies of the Honduran government. And this corporate media uh, keep quiet and don't talk about uh, violence in Honduras, they curiously talk more about the problems of free press in countries as Venezuela and other countries, but they never talk about what's going on in, 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 in our country, where many journalists are demanding more uh, safe, safer uh, environment to work. Uh, you can't uh, be a journalist without putting your life in danger. When you brought up the point of Venezuela, let me switch now to Ian. Ian, Venezuela comes up a lot when it, when it pertains to issues of press freedom, stating that there are, there are none here for journalists. Do you find that to be true? Well, it's a strange contrast, isn't it, Reagan? I mean, you're absolutely right. Venezuela has come down under immense international pressure over the last decade or more on the issue of press freedom. Uh, and it's difficult. I mean, in, the, in, in, its, in its last report, Reporters Without Borders put it in position 139 out of 180 countries. And it's quite difficult to grasp why, because the situation is dramatically different. There is absolutely nothing in Venezuela that compares with the kind of thing that Gerardo has experienced himself uh, and has described to us in Honduras in terms of murders, harassment of journalists. Uh, you know, I, I was looking actually at the Reporters Without Borders latest report. Mm. The only case they came up with of, a, of persecution of a journalist in Venezuela was a case of uh, David Natera, the editor of a local paper in, in Bolivar State, who was jailed for apparently writing about corruption in, a, in an iron ore company. I don't know the details of that case. There may or not, the, the, the justice system may or may not have been working well in that case. But that in terms of violence and harassment of journalists, it just doesn't, doesn't exist. The arguments usually used against Venezuela have more to do with the government's supposed attempt to control or, 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 or silence the opposition media. But for anybody who's spent any time in Venezuela, Gerardo can see this himself, as he's just been here a, a couple of weeks, 
Uh, you know, the vast majority of media outlets, or, or rather a, a huge part of the e media outlets, remain in private hands. A majority of the major TV stations, most of the radio stations, most of the written press are in private hands, and almost all of them, in different degrees, are opponents of the government, and many of them very, very vociferous ones. So it's quite difficult to understand exactly what this, uh, this uh, you know, criticism of Venezuela is about other than it's part of the political dispute going on in Venezuela. In contrast, what kind of feedback do you think journalists in Venezuela who support the government, what type of feedback do they get from oppositors of the government? Well, there's a, there's a very tense political situation, standoff, uh, struggle going on in Venezuela, and obviously that reflects in the media. So you do get hostility from one side or the other. I mean, for example, uh, we ourselves were covering uh, an opposition uh, when the opposition were collecting signatures for a recall referendum just a week ago. Uh, most of the time it was calm and well-humored, but suddenly a group of uh, opposition uh, people began shouting slogans against Telesur and, and uh, becoming quite aggressive. It wasn't violent, but it was a little bit aggressive. You know? So that, 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 that happens. That's part of the political situation in Venezuela. Final question to you, Ian. What type of, of, what can you make of the fact that in the countries in Latin America where there's most violence towards journalists, these are U.S. allies, Colombia, Honduras, Mexico, what does that say about the U.S.'s silence on these issues? Well, obviously, it's negligent in that respect. But I think more than the U.S. alliance, it's, about, it's to do with the power and the struggle over power in those countries. Most of the media in Latin America are private. Yeah. Most of the private concerns, large private concerns, are aligned with the old elites. Uh, and the old elites don't like losing bits of that power. And when they have a, a government that begins to build up in other, other kinds of media, begins to displace their absolute monopoly over the media, they react in this way. Ian, Bruce, Gerardo Torres, thank you so much guys for being here with us. Hope you can touch base with you another time. Thanks again. Thank you.